Affinity is a free image editing software that is basically Photoshop and Illustrator in one software, but free. You can get it right now over at affinity.studio. And this is my third video on it. So if you want to learn more, go watch the other ones. But today, I once again want to show you step by step how to create the thumbnails. Except this time, we will make thumbnails that don't require you to have a picture of yourself. I'm also going to give you a bunch of tips and tricks in order to make your thumbnails look better in general. So let's begin. Before we even begin, you need to understand contrast. Contrast as in colors, as in focus, as in size, as in values. For example, if I show you this picture and I ask you, which character is the most important one? Come on, take your time. Uh, you don't know. Your first instinct might be to look in the middle. So when we talk about hierarchy and contrast, this is what we're talking about. Also means that I forgot to say position when I was listing those things. Position is also pretty important. Something in the middle might be subconsciously something that you look for to be the most important. This guy, maybe. And now, if I ask you, who is the important character? You immediately know. That's an example of hierarchy through colors. But now, even if I leave the color on this person, uh, you can tell who's the important person. Now, ideally, you wouldn't want to confuse anyone. So you would go ahead and actually combine those to really put the emphasis. So we had hierarchy of color and now we have hierarchy of focus. All right, who's the important one now? It's fairly clear. So this is the hierarchy of what I call values, basically brightness, contrast, basically what pops. And finally, if I ask you, hey, who's the important one here? You will probably get the idea. So that's the hierarchy of size. Congrats, you now know how to draw attention to whatever you're trying to show. So I'm going to click on my rectangle tool or press U on my keyboard. I'm going to draw a nice little rectangle. That's going to be our background. Usually top left or just top bar here is where you're going to find the properties for whatever tool you have selected. Since we have the shape tool selected, then this is going to affect my rectangle. We're going to make it black for now. We're going to do kind of a high contrast thing. And I'm going to go find like a PNG image of whatever my subject is. We're going to say that we're doing some sort of gaming type of thumbnail. Maybe it's a video about gaming news, a patch note, a new item, a new season, or is it just gameplay? Either way, it's going to fit. Now, if you're wondering, where do you find those transparent background characters? I typed Arc Raiders characters, but honestly, you can also just take a screenshot from your own game and just remove the background. We're going to use this one. So I'm going to right click, click copy image, go back to affinity and press control V or paste. Then for moving around and transforming, I'm going to make sure that I have my move tool selected or press V on my keyboard. There you go. We're going to keep it fairly big because uh, we want the subject to be quite big. And there are certain little things that I like to do. For example, if a character is facing somewhere, I like it. I like the character to be facing towards the text. So I could either place it here or right click transform and then flip horizontal. It just makes more sense in my head, at least. So you want to start very very, very, very simple with character plus text. If that's what it's about, you can press T a couple of times or just click here for artistic text tool. Click somewhere, type, uh, type your text, press control A to select all of it. Go up top. Remember, we have the text tool selected since it's a tool. Everything you want to know about the tool is going to be in that top bar, including the including the text color, make it white and then the text font right here. You usually want big font, uh, very visible. I'm going to go with Aharoni. This is my first time using this, this font, I think. <laughs> Let's put it like this. So something like that. Already, you have a very clean thumbnail because it communicates exactly what the thumbnail is about. Boom, character from Art Creators. Boom, patch notes. Just two words. Easy. Very, very easy to understand. If anyone is interested in that kind of stuff and then they stumble across this thumbnail, Actually, the N is not very visible uh, at a glimpse. And it's all you need at a glimpse. It needs to communicate what it is or convey mystery while also telling you what it's about. Character plus text is great, but if the video is about patch notes or it's about a new weapon or it's about like winning or something like that, you kind of also want to show a little bit of that. For example, for a patch note video, I would put a screenshot of part of the patch note. Can we find some Arc Raiders patch notes? I don't play Arc Raiders, by the way. <laughs> but if I'm going to make a video about it, I want it to be realistic. So I'll, I need to see what the actual patch notes would look like so I can recreate that for the thumbnail. OK, for example, here in this patch, there's a part that says improved enemy ground detection to better handle steep surfaces, reducing erratic movement when traversing angled terrain. So if I want to, I can press uh, print screen, copy this. But that's a lot of text for a thumbnail. Remember that the thumbnail is a tiny little thing that's going to appear and that needs to immediately want 
make people want to click on it. If there's a bunch of text that is like, you can't read that, right? Because the thumbnail is most likely going to look like this on someone's screen. Now you could use this to convey the mystery, right? You can make people want to click to see what is this about? You can see that, oh, this resembles actual patch notes. So I know that it's official, but I can't read it from the thumbnail. So I'm going to click on the video to know what it's about. Maybe. But it's even better if you recreate this and you basically paraphrase it, right? You know when YouTubers will pu put a tweet that was never tweeted, <laughs> but on the thumbnail, it looks outrageous enough to make you want to click. That's all it is. So I'm going to press T for my artistic text tool and I'm going to type movement uh, with the move tool. I'm going to size it this time. Shows you that you can size stuff uh, different ways. Do the same thing. I'm going to create a rectangle. That's going to be our background, basically. Nice. Uh, here, I want to show you how to use the color picker. So with your rectangle tool, of course, top left here, you're going to have the color. But you see there, color picker you can click hold and then drop it on the color you want. And now your rectangle is that exact color. And your layers list on the right here, you want to you want to bring it behind your text, okay? I'm gonna select my text, hold shift, press T for the text tool, and then set the color to black. And basically play around with the fonts until you have something that not only looks legit, but also, you know, is legible. All right, now we can get rid of our original image. If we want, we can put all of those in a group. So select all of them, holding shift, press control G. And now they're in a group together. I can also move them together with the move tool, V for the move tool, or I accidentally change the name of the group to V. Whatever, V for the move tool. And I can move them all together and also resize them. But here's the thing, right? We have our basic elements and that's how you, I want you to start. Don't start with a com complicated background, a screenshot of the game, blah, blah, blah. The most simple stuff, right? You put the text, you put, this is where I would start thinking of how do I decorate this to make it look a little more appealing. Knowing that contrast wise, uh, hierarchy wise, I have everything I need. The text is big. It's white, it's very visible. My little patch note thing is a little bit smaller and my character is also pretty big. Keeping in mind that the whole time we need to worry about space, right? We need things to, to breathe a little bit. So that's why you'll see I have a margin between the top here. I have a margin on the right, a pretty good margin on the left and also at the bottom. This is what makes things feel clean. Like how can you tell uh, uh, an amateur graphic designer versus a professional is like the amateur tends to be like, I'm going to put my text like this. I'm like, oh, my text needs to basically like touch every side. I need to utilize all of this. You don't, you don't, this is visible. In fact, this is visible if I wanted to, <laughs> right? So I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to click on the A. Oh, it brings up my character thing, but it brought it on my other screen. It's going to bring it here. And I want to play with the, the space between the, there I go, bring it closer. Again, I'm trying to utilize the, the, the space. So that is the leading override, whatever that means. Okay, I can bring this like that. And for the actual patch note, I can bring it up and I would probably rotate it a little bit, right? Just so we don't have like a, just a bunch of squares. So it's, it doesn't seem too, too formal. Every single time you're worried about Am I cutting off enough for people not to recognize a specific letter or read this incorrectly? Uh, for example, I can bring this here and now it's like patch note. This could be an F. All right, when it comes to decoration, my first instinct is to add color. And honestly, that one is on you. You decide which color. Honestly, we can add whatever color. So I'm gonna start with my text. I'm gonna go ahead and select one of the words and give it some color. If this is for YouTube or something like that, like you definitely want something that is punchy, that is very visible, very saturated. Let's go with this color. And then I'm gonna select my background. And at the bottom, I will add a new layer. So it adds it on top of the background. And I'm gonna select my brush tool. So B, on top you have all the options, like the size, like the transparency. And we want that 50% or less. And the hardness, we want it to be 0% hardness. So it's very soft brush. And I'm gonna hold Alt on my keyboard, click and drag. And that's a color picker for when you have the brush selected. Okay, so right now I can draw with that color. Oh, I set the flow to zero instead of the hardness. So watch out for that. <laughs> you will always get like a preview. See how I'm moving my mouse and you can see kind of a preview of what it's gonna look like. But that's good. Let me make my brush a little bigger. There you go. And here I can just go ahead and paint a little bit. Maybe it's a little too opaque. Let's say more than, let's say 10% mostly. Okay. But now I can start like just adding some highlights behind my character. 
Okay, that simple. Now we want the character to kind of react to the color. So we want the character to also display those colors a little bit. How do we do that? You would technically want to manually go and basically brush those colors on the outline to kind of fake this light behind them reacting. But there's also a cheap way of achieving this. Very, very cheap and it looks cheap, but that's what we're gonna do because we're trying to be efficient. So we're gonna select the character here. Okay, I'm gonna go to the bottom of my layers list and click on effects. And we're going to add an inner glow. We're going to tick the box and also select this. For the color, we're going to click once. Color picker here. Bring it. All right. And now blend mode. We're going to set this to add. And now we can play around with it. And we see it appearing. As I said, very cheap. But it gets the job, the job done. Intensity, you can... You can see it. if your character already has some highlights around it, you can also set this to color, I believe. There you go. And that way, it just like it doesn't make it brighter. It just adds the color and then just lower the intensity a little bit. And you have this effect. Now your character is basically dynamically reacting to uh, whatever color you choose for your thumbnail. In that same vein, I'm going to select my group here. I want it to be a little separated because we are lacking con contrast of value this is kind of beige and this is white and we want some separation so we're going to go to layer effects again and i'm going to add an outline for sure i want that outline to be black i want to play around with the radius there it is cool and i'm going to also add an outer glow to see if i can add a little bit of of that greenish color to it select it uh radius there it is remember the color click on the color picker bring it here nice you can always come back and play around with it a little bit. All right, not bad, but maybe the text isn't stylized enough, like the, the patch notes text. What I can do is probably like separate it. So I'm going to press T. I'm going to select the word note. I'm going to control X to basically delete it. I'm going to duplicate this patch with the move tool selected. I can hold alt, click, drag, and then T again. Control V for notes. There it is. Cool. So now I can do layer effects on the word notes. I'm going to add an outline. That outline will be that green color. Pump up the radius. I'm also going to add an inner glow. It's not going to be super visible right now. Same color, that green. And then we're going to set a gradient overlay. Set it to 90 degrees. Set the blend mode to linear burn. Lower the opacity. You can maybe add some bevel and emboss. Let's go with inner bevel. So by default, this is always linked. So I usually unlink it so that my radius can be small, right? It doesn't have to be thick like that can be pretty small while also having a lot of depth, right? So it's sharper that way, just like that. Keep in mind that you can always lower the intensity of the highlights or shadows. For example, if I want my shadows to be less visible, I can always do that. So they're sharp, but not super visible. And for the highlights, I want them to be very visible. What we need now is little details in the background to make it not look so empty. I usually you do this by just grabbing some stuff on the internet, <laughs> some assets. If I type abstract background, for example, we want something with particles. This one's already green, so that's perfect. Copy image, control V to paste, V for remove tool, and you want to play around with this a little bit. You can see that here, I'm basically trying to bring it away from my text because again, uh, hierarchy, right? If I have it up here, then we have green on green here and we lose like that contrast. I want the word patch to be on that black background because that's when it's the most visible. Same thing for notes, kind of, but it has a different color. So it's a little bit more visible. So here I can do this, something like this. It cuts off here, for example, but we can either erase with a very soft brush or create a mask. We're going to do erase because I don't want to, I don't feel like explaining masks again. Uh, <laughs> Let's do a pretty big brush. Make sure that it is very soft. And uh, there we go. Then like that. And just like that, it blends in perfectly. I want to duplicate this, that background, except I want it to be on top of everything. I'm going to right click and I'm going to flip it horizontally. So transform, flip horizontal. And I basically want that part to be on top of my character. So it gives it depth. It feels like there's something behind the character and there's something on top of the character. Like, oh, how am I going to, but it's not a transparent image. How am I going to, blending modes, screen or add. I'm going to go with screen because add makes it a little too bright. Um, that one in the background, I want it to be more transparent. So opacity is on top of your layers list. You can lower that by a lot. So let's turn this one off. Okay. Uh, and now we can erase away some more. Eraser tool, E, by the way. Not too bad. Let's bring it down a little bit. Oh, I have the mask selected. It creates a mask when you um, 
when you erase, which is cool. Everything is like non-destructive in Affinity. <laughs> Photoshop would be like, yeah, you deleted, you erased part, part of your image. Uh, it's gone forever. <laughs> you know, let's lower the opacity a little bit. There you go. You don't want it to be too visible because it's doubling on the color behind it and it's becoming the brightest thing on screen. You don't want, it's not what you want. You can add some more if you want to. For example, I want you to understand that whatever image you find, as long as there's a little bit of contrast, you can actually change them to the color that you want. Something you can also type is uh, circular particles. Of course, you want like high quality images, right? Something like that. Okay, I'm right behind my character, control V, okay. So if I go blending mode and I set this to add, for example, we can tell that, yeah, the color is not right. What I can do is press control U and it will add a hue and saturation. But the problem is that it adds it as its own layer. So everything underneath it is going to be affected, right? So this means that's its own layer. Everything underneath it, including my text and blah, blah, blah. So if I change the color now, all of this will be affected. We just need this to be affected. What I can do is right click on it and click create clipping mask. And now, as you can see, it is attached to my particle layer. A clipping mask is basically a mask, but it attaches to the layer underneath it. So it will not be affecting anything else. Now I can go ahead and my slider, I can change the color by sliding the hue to something that I want. Boom. And now it's just a matter of placing it, maybe duplicating it and blah, blah, blah. But Okay, not bad, not bad. My group looks ugly, I'm not gonna lie. Not very happy about it. Let's bring that down maybe a little bit, center it a little bit. It actually gives us more space on the bottom right, more particles, and maybe add a gradient overlay for that little ticket thing. I'm gonna go to layer effects, gradient overlay, change the blending mode to something else. If you wanna add something dark, then darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn, darker color. If you want it to be brighter, all of that, hover over them, you'll see what they do. Let's go with linear burn, offset it a little bit, bevel emboss, perhaps, depth, a lot, make it sharp, radius, not a lot. Type of bevel, maybe pillow, oh, it is on pillow. Lower the shadow, yeah, I believe that looks okay. But yeah, um, always zoom out, be like, oh, is this visible? Can people comprehend this? If it's small, do people understand? If I'm an Arc Raiders player, or if I watch Arc Raiders videos, I see this and I know what's going on, right? If I really want to be professional, I would probably create a layer on top of everything. And I would go with my actual brush tool and I would brush more details, uh, put that color green um, in more places, basically make things glow a little bit more to give it more harmony. Let me time-lapse that. There you go. And I just set the blending mode to lighter color. Oh, and of course the, the word patch doesn't have to be, I. Me personally, I like when it's clean like that, but you can obviously um, add a bunch of layer effects too. You can also add your bevel emboss. You can even copy the effects that you have on notes and just paste them. You'll see the logo FX right next to notes here. You can hold alt on your keyboard, click, drag, boom, and you see it added it. <laughs> and of course you can click on them to just adjust them. Let's do that. Uh, for example, it goes too high. The scale is wrong. It's our gradient overlay. Let's scale it on the Y axis. No, wrong one. X axis. There we go. Make it shorter basically, and then offset it on and then offset it on the Y axis. Go play with the scale again. Very simple. But that's pretty much it. You usually have your character plus subject or plus text or both. One thing that I will say is that you always kind of try to want to add a face in a way or a human or something that people can easily relate to, right? If I'm doing something about Arc Raiders, even if it's about a map, I would probably put that character on the side and then put the map on the other side, right? I would be like new map up top and then I would put a screenshot of the map with my character on the side. It's just like a psychology thing where people just are more likely to click on your thumbnail if there's a face or humanoid thing on it. So even if you make content without your face or if you don't want your face to appear on your thumbnails, you can always find a way to have a face in there. Anyways, blending modes, masks, adjustment layers, and then basic tools. That's it for today's lesson. I will see you guys on the next one. Make sure you watch the other videos in the playlist. Check out the link in the description for the free file for this. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.